In this series, we're doing a deep dive of the fundamentals of pistol marksmanship. The five generally recognized basic fundamentals of how to shoot a handgun are grip, aiming, breath control, trigger squeeze, and follow through. Somewhere in the mix, the concept of a good solid stance is generally covered. When I'm teaching a beginner level student, I like to front load the discussion of stance because you can think of that as it establishes a solid foundation for when we execute the rest of the fundamentals. Now the stance is not something that we spend a whole lot of time discussing in a class. It's pretty intuitive once you understand it. I'm gonna go into a little bit more deep dive in this video because I'm not there in person to coach you through this. Now it also bears mentioning that we should not confuse the term stance with static. We need to be able to be mobile when we're shooting. However, at the beginning level, the foundational level, when we're trying to perfect those other five fundamentals, we always start with a static shooting platform. The principles we're going to discuss here will directly translate later when we move from a static shooting position to more dynamic movement techniques and then it will facilitate more rapid re-engagement of the target. Regardless of what position we find ourselves shooting in, we want a solid foundation to counterbalance some of the recall impulses, especially those ones that are trying to push us a little bit to the rear. If we're flat footed, it's going to rock us back onto the heels. And if it's not self-evident, the reason we don't want to be rocking backwards onto the heels is because it will put us off balance. Being off balance is never a good thing in life, regardless if it's static shooting at a beginner level, slow aim fire, if it's in a competition, or if you're in the competition of your life. There's a few key points for us to cover in regards to stance. First off, whenever we're starting out at the beginner level especially, we want to have a skeletal neutral stance. This is commonly referred to as our natural point of aim. When we have that natural point of aim, our skeletal system is naturally pointing towards what we want to hit. Another way of saying this is, where does the gun naturally point to when our hips and core are generally relaxed and we're not having to invoke muscle groups to push the gun in alignment with the target? What most people find is that if our feet and hips are square to the target and we are totally relaxed, then when we push the gun forward without invoking any upper body muscle groups to correct the course, we will tend to naturally push the gun towards the support side of our body, meaning I'm a right-handed shooter. So in that skeletal neutral relaxed position, when I press forward, my gun will naturally be pointing towards the left side of where I desire that point of impact to be. Now, of course, we can muscle the gun over, but that defeats the point of a natural point of aim or that neutral skeletal position. We want to use as few muscle groups as possible, especially at the building block stages, because the more muscle groups we have to use to force the gun over, the shorter the utility of that shooting session will be. There is a phenomenon known as shooter fatigue. Either mental or physical fatigue will set in after a point in time, and then you're going to have diminishing returns on your range session. And also consider that the more muscle groups you use to stabilize the gun, the more wobble you're going to introduce as you're trying to hone those five fundamentals. Now that we've established the purpose or the importance of the natural point of aim, we've established kind of some context. Now we're going to move down range and I'm going to walk you through how I typically will coach someone with establishing a good solid stance. Remember, this is not a static type mindset. This is the foundational skills that gives us the proper body mechanics so that later on when we're introducing more dynamic things such as shooting while moving or awkward shooting positions, this has established the foundation for the body mechanics that will support those. All right, so now that we're down on the firing line, let's go over how we actually achieve that good balanced stance. So when talking stance, it's first helpful to understand our natural point of aim. I'll have the student stand with their toes and hips facing towards the target board with the feet a little bit more than shoulder width apart. By having the feet a little more than shoulder width apart, it essentially opens up or broadens that stance and it allows us to use those hip flexor muscles if we introduce any dynamic movement techniques in short order. 
when we're shooting static, it opens up the base for a more solid foundation. So if you heard the term isosceles stance before, this would be it. The toes and the hips are facing towards the target. And if I take the cleared handgun, acquire a two-handed grip, and I point at the center of the target, my core and my arms are forming an isosceles triangle. The problem with the isosceles is it works against your body's natural point of aim. To demonstrate the natural point of aim, I'll have the student close their eyes, totally relax their shoulders and their core with a two-handed grip. We'll just let the gun hang in front of the shooter's body. Think of this as a grossly over-exaggerated low ready position. Now keep in mind, I do not want you to force the gun to stay on your center line. I want you to let it relax. Relax your shoulders, relax your core, and just let it hang directly in front of your body at whatever feels natural. With the toes and the hips facing towards the target, I'm going to close my eyes. I'm going to relax the shoulders, relax the core. Take a deep breath. Let it out. With my eyes still closed, I'm just going to bring the gun up in a relaxed fashion to what feels skeletally neutral or natural straight in front of me. Remember, I'm not trying to orient the gun to where I remember the target being. I'm just letting the skeletal system bring the gun straight up into what feels relaxed and natural. When you do this, you'll likely note, if you're being honest with yourself, is that the gun is naturally pointed towards the support side of your target. Meaning I'm a right-handed shooter, so at that skeletal neutral position, the gun is naturally pointing a little bit off to the left or the nine o'clock of my desired point of aim. To account for this, so we're not using muscle groups to move the, the gun into alignment with the target, we'll take that strong side foot, so the same foot that your gun is in the hand of, and we're gonna scoot it about four or five inches to the rear. Support side toe is still touching the mat. Strong side foot is just a, about four or five inches to the rear of that. Repeat the drill. Take a deep breath, close your eyes, relax your shoulders and your core. And then when you're ready, slowly and in a relaxed fashion, bring the gun up into what feels natural and neutral. Open your eyes and you should be a little bit closer to the center line of that target board. If you found that you overshot it, and now you're too far to the other side, then take that strong side foot and move it an inch or so forward and try it again. For me, when I just did this, I was still just a little bit to the nine o'clock. So I'm gonna take that strong side foot, I'm gonna inch it back just another inch or so and repeat the drill. Close your eyes, take a deep breath, roll the shoulders, relax the core. And then just bring the gun up to what feels natural and neutral. Now the gun is more centered onto this target board. It does not need, it does not need to be absolutely perfect. What we're going for here is to reduce the amount of tertiary muscle groups that are required for that fine tune alignment. When the gun comes from the holster or from position three of the draw stroke, straight out we want to be as skeletal neutral that natural point of aim as possible so that is the natural point of aim now we're going to introduce the other two concepts here we're going to lower the center of gravity slightly by putting a little bit of a bend in the knees do not over exaggerate this we don't want your hamstrings to be giving out halfway through your shooting session it just needs to be nice and bouncy what this does, by lowering your center of gravity, gives you greater balance and stability, adding to what we already have with the hips being a little bit open. The third and final element we'll talk about is taking that center of gravity that you've already dropped a little bit, and now we're going to shift it slightly forward. By having your center of gravity a little bit forward in your stance, it helps to mitigate that little bit of recoil energy that's trying to push you to the rear. Now, when we're doing this, some people have equated it to learning how to snow ski where you're leaning forward in your ski boots so that your shins are kind of riding on the front of the boots. If you played basketball, the triple threat drill where you have your weight forward in your stance, however you want to conceptualize it, if you have the weight forward just a little bit, shifting the weight to the balls of the feet, it will help to mitigate that. 
by using the natural point of aim, by lowering the center of gravity, by bending the knees, and then shifting the center of gravity forward just a little bit, what we have achieved is what's called the modified isosceles stance. This is a more natural way of pushing the gun straight into what we're looking at while also providing the stability and the flexibility using those hip flexor muscles. Remember, we don't get wrapped around the axle with that foot placement, however. Regardless of how you find yourself having to engage the target, the concepts of having that lower and forward center of gravity will still apply. Whether you're shooting on the move or you're in an awkward shooting position such as kneeling behind cover or even side prone. The fundamental concepts still apply. All right, that wraps up the discussion on stance. If you have any questions, throw it into that discussion. If you're finding these educational videos helpful, it would be helpful to me if you would make sure you're subscribed, give it a thumbs up, but most importantly, push these out to those in your peer group by hitting that share button. Even better, instead of sharing this video, navigate to the playlist and share that folder with your friends. All right. Next up, check out this one over here on grip as we jump into the five fundamentals of handgun marksmanship. And until next time, God bless you and stay safe.